So what do you think is Donald Trump's most dangerous policy? Is it the massive backs and forths on North Korea? Or is it the policy of brinksmanship for idiots that we seem to be running against Iran and Venezuela? Is it the abuse of all our old allies? Or is it Trump's intensification of Obama's racist immigration policy that the liberal media has decided to care about all of a sudden? Actually, it's none of those things. And it's something the New York Times opinion page seems to be perfectly fine with. Trump and the three presidents before him have all worked very hard to make Russia the scariest country on the planet. I'm not talking about the conflicts in Ukraine or Syria or election meddling here. 99% of what we focus on with Russia is meaningless bullshit compared to the true danger. Russia and the United States are the only countries in the world with nuclear arsenals big enough to wipe out human civilization. And the Russians can't afford to maintain their nukes anymore. The two arsenals are about the same size, but the US economy is 12 times larger than the Russian one. The fall in oil and gas prices since 2014 has lowered Russian GDP by a quarter, requiring defense budget cuts and austerity on social programs that brought tens of thousands of people to the streets of Moscow just last week. Russia's nuclear program, one of the most complex and expensive scientific projects in human history, is currently being held together by spit and bubblegum. Russia can't admit this, of course. The nukes are the only thing they have left that makes them look like a first-tier power. This was scary enough when they were just holding on to an old arsenal that they couldn't afford, but now the United States is actively pushing them into a new nuclear arms race, and the results are terrifying. The Russian nuclear program is now experiencing catastrophic failure on a monthly basis. On July 1st, a fire broke out on a Russian nuclear submarine, killing 14 sailors. It's unclear, but many suspect the accident happened because they were testing new capabilities. The heroism and sacrifice of these sailors did get the sub back to port, averting incalculable worldwide environmental damage, but it could have been so much worse. On August 8th, just last Thursday, the Russians managed to blow up a nuclear reactor, killing at least five top scientists and spiking radiation levels across northern Russia. Details are still emerging, but most suspect that the scientists were testing a nuclear-powered cruise missile that Putin announced with great fanfare last year. It's important to emphasize that these are just the accidents we hear about. News of these horrors is quickly shoved under the rug in the United States because it doesn't fit the narrative. Russia can't be risking environmental catastrophe on a daily basis because of its weakness. Russia needs to be strong and scary to justify those Pentagon budgets. This is the reason why defense industry promotional brochures like the New York Times always focus on Russia's scary new weapons, not on the fact that they can't test them without killing dozens of their own people and poisoning their own countryside. The New York Times and the rest have been fantastically successful in this, by the way. In the coming decades, we are expected to spend over a trillion dollars maintaining and expanding our nuclear arsenal. And the Trump administration wants to add more capabilities as well. It's a spending bonanza, and a lot of people are getting very rich. By the way, there is no reason to think this escalating series of nuclear program mistakes won't extend to Russian command and control. The chances of destroying human civilization by mistake are probably just as high now as they were during the Cold War. The disappearance of ideological conflict between communism and capitalism doesn't make mistaken nuclear apocalypse less likely, it just makes it even dumber. This year has seen the demise of yet another arms control treaty between Russia and the United States. This is profoundly sad. Russia is desperate to do deals with us and save the money that they'd otherwise have to spend on weapons systems. You've probably heard a lot about Russia's election-swinging cyber war capabilities, but have you heard anything about the fact that they have repeatedly proposed sweeping deals with the United States that would block the development of those capabilities? Probably not.
Russia just wants its non-existent great power status confirmed. The US wants that too, but it doesn't want any of the stability that a deal limiting nukes or cyber would provide. The Pentagon wants a rival that justifies developing terrifying new capabilities, and more importantly, tons of money to spend on those capabilities. The money-saving arms limitation deals that Russia so desperately wants get in the way of that, so Washington DC blocks them, and destroys the the ones we already have. To maintain the fiction that it still matters, Russia has to try to keep up, sacrificing its international reputation, its soldiers and scientists, its eternal stability, and its environment. This is only going to get worse. What we have to fear is Russian disintegration, not Russian power. We spent a lot of time focusing on nuclear proliferation with North Korea and Iran, but at the same time, we've been gleefully pissing all over the most important nuclear relationship, the one between Russia and the United States. Four and a half years ago, I made a video sounding the alarm about this. You should give it a watch. Nothing has improved since then. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notifications whenever I upload a video. Thanks.